I just want to say thank you to all of you for being here. This is so cool. <laughs> of course. I'm super happy to be here and to meet all of you. I love you all. That's fun. Thank you for having me. I'm kind of geeking out too right now. I also love your dog. <laughs> the, it's the best. <laughs> That's her pain. She just wants to play. <laughs> like, this would be a good time for a nap, Echo. Hey, Isabel here. Okay, so in the last video, we took a look at the word reconciliation to get a better understanding of what it means. But there is a lot in this topic to wrap your head around. Like, how does it all come together? What can I do to help? Who can I ask? And what do Indigenous people think about it? CBC Kids News took your questions to a panel of four Indigenous people from across Canada. One's an athlete, one's a comic book artist, one's a fashion designer, and one's using TikTok to spread Indigenous education. Let's check it out. Here's a question for you from a Canadian kid. I'll play the clip right now. Hello, my name is Sawyer Burke. I'm 12 years old and live in Hatchet Lake, Nova Scotia. My question for today is, what does the new holiday Day of Truth and Reconciliation mean to you as an Indigenous person. Thank you. First and foremost, I think it's long overdue that we finally have a day to kind of, you know, acknowledge the um, the true history of so-called Canada and to finally have a day that's kind of dedicated to it, knowing that, you know, a lot of um, uh, organizations and, you know, uh, governments will be taking the initiative to educate and also, you know, provide resources. Uh, for Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples living in so-called Canada. So I think it's a, it's a good step forward towards, uh, you know, reconciliation. So. My hope with this holiday is that it's not seen as a day off, but rather a day for Indigenous peoples to take the time needed to, to nurture themselves and for non-Indigenous peoples to do the work. My hope is that, like, yes, it's a day off, um, and it's a day for Indigenous people to gather and mourn and take care of themselves, but there's so much work that needs to be done and that doesn't fall on Indigenous people anymore. It is important to put one day, um, but also we need more than a day. <laughs> Hi, my name is Zara and I'm 12 years old. I live in Lethbridge, Alberta. What can we do to make up for the crimes of the past, such as residential institutes? There needs to be accountability, you know, there needs to be people that um, should be held accountable for the crimes that they committed. You know, there's still people out there, um, nuns and priests uh, who were in charge of these residential schools that are still roaming free and that, you know, a lot of people want to see that justice, you know, they want to see, um, it's important for their healing. Uh, so I think uh, accountability really does need to happen. Uh, I would suggest uh, giving the land back. Um, it's something that uh, I read a few churches have started to do where they've kind of just like uh, given their whole land, including the church, back to, you know, the First Nations community that they're, they live in. Um, so that would be a huge step, for sure. Residential schools aren't a thing of the past. Um, like the last one closed 25 years ago. What are some Indigenous issues that should be talked about more and how can we share correct information? I Mental health. I want to focus on that so much, mental health. It's so intense for me. Uh, where, I've, where I'm from, services are really low. We have so much judgments on Inuit being uh, not good workers or like really, uh, Inuit are seen as really, I don't know, lazy or something like that, but we don't think about the mental health issue that we, they do have at home. You know, like what Isabel said, there's so many mental health issues within all of our communities, you know, whether you're in an Inuit community or within um, a Cree community, um, you know, there's, so, there's such a lack of resources within our communities and I feel like uh, the more allies, the more, you know, support we have from other peoples, we'll be able to, you know, move forward and, you know, bring that healing to our communities and to Canada and society. What can Canadians do to make the Indigenous people feel more welcome in the country? So often in my experience, um, Indigenous people, like, lack safety in all spaces. Um, 
And if we had more people who were showing up in a good way with good intentions, um, with the willingness to like, do the work and help create safe spaces for Indigenous people, I think we would be um, making good progress. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that I continue to say is that an Instagram story lasts 24 hours and it goes away, but being involved in like tangible work lasts a lifetime. Ensuring that, you know, we are working together as a collective and we're no longer left out and our voices are valued and honored rather than just dismissed. Okay, and we've got another question from a Canadian kid. Let's check it out. I know it's important to wear orange shirts to remind us that there is work to be done for reconciliation, but who can actually do the big work and what can I do to help? We need to see more non-Indigenous people, you know, at the front lines. We need to see more non-Indigenous people and allies with us, you know, supporting us and uplifting our voices, you know, for so long all of this weight and all of this you know all of these duties fell on indigenous peoples it was always us at the front lines it was always us fighting against the government you know it's always us being locked up and um you know i want to see more people you know doing that work and also you know educating not only themselves but the, their families as well too i guess what i'd like to see is more like uh physical action of participation. It's one thing to, you know, actually uh, like just retweet someone talking about Orange Shirt Day residential schools. And it's another thing to uh, wear an orange shirt on Orange Shirt Day. Um, and, uh, you know, it's another thing to actually stand up and talk back to those people who don't believe that residential schools existed or maybe they weren't as bad as they were. So, Personally, I get a lot of questions from my friends and teachers all the time about just like a bunch of different things about being Indigenous. What's one question that hurts you as an Indigenous person to receive? I have so many thoughts, um, like trying to pick just one. Throughout my life, I've had to continue to prove that I am enough. And it goes back to elementary school when um, I'd go on a field trip and we'd be on the bus and we'd have to travel through the north end of Winnipeg and my peers would ask me if the very visibly indigenous houseless people on the streets were my parents and if I would end up like that just because I'm indigenous. Um, and then as I kind of grew up and really took power in like who I was and pride in who I was as an indigenous young person, it then changed to like proving or changing the narrative of of that I was an exception as an Indigenous person, um, that not all of Indigenous people are like I am, or that I'm one of the good ones, and breaking down those stereotypes. I made an illustration that was sort of like, a, like a truck stop t-shirt style illustration where it was like a native shaman holding an amulet. And when I presented it to the class, a woman asked, how does it feel being a non-Indigenous male appropriate culture you're not a part of and i was like yes i am and i told her i was indigenous i told her i was teltan i told her who my community was and who my parents were and all of that was not enough for her she straight up was like if you're not brown you can't do this and i was like but i'm still indigenous of course there were lots more questions we couldn't get to and those amazing panelists don't speak for all Indigenous people in Canada. But I do hope our conversation helped answer some of your questions and give a platform for Indigenous voices. Until next time, I'm Isabel DeRoy Olson. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>